So um, anyway, um, let me just start that off. You know, um, I just want to ask everybody in here, like, to um, everybody in the classroom, can somebody like give me, somebody can raise your hand and I can ask them like, what is hip hop to you guys in 2013? I'm talking about everything as a whole, not just music, but like everything as a whole. I want to ask you. Uh, uh, I don't know, hip hop's kind of ratchet right now. It's kind of what? The word everybody else uses is like ratchet, it's kind of like turned down. Like it's, it's really like, it's more like loud bass and like anything and get like to go to dance, but hip hop isn't like what it was like when I was born in the 90s, where it's like people talk about different stuff, you got different genres of music. Right. See if you talk about selling drugs, if you talk about like a girl shaking her ass in the club, or you talk about both at the same time. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Okay. Um, anybody else? Can somebody tell me like what does hip hop mean to them in 2013? Please, I mean somebody gotta say something. Okay. I never showed up anyway. So I'll say All right. Um, I'm just now actually paying attention to hip hop because of this class. So what it means to me is is that it is a complete uh, culture. You got you got your own language. You got your own style of music. You got graffiti art. You've got uh, even politics involved in there. So to me, it's, it's a way of life that I didn't even know existed, and I live right in, in, in the same country with it. I just thought it was music. OK. But it's a lot more than that that I'm learning. Right. Um, I think you said like an important um, you said an important matter to me, though. Like Hip hop is more like, it's like a lifestyle. It's something that you can't really see on TV and dress up and like you say like you're hip hop. To be hip hop, there has to be representation because hip hop itself was built on battling. Like if you said you was hip hop, like you had to battle. Mm. You can't just like that's like if somebody just came up and just like, you know, like I'm down with him, but you don't even know the dude, but he's saying that he's down with you. Like you got to have verification, and for hip hop, it's always evolved with battling. <coughs> like if you was an MC, you battled. If you was a graffiti artist, you battled in your neighborhood. Who can get up the most? And if you got up the most and your reputation was high, like you won the battle. You can say he was the best graffiti writer without getting out there and they would call it going all city. You had to go all city. You couldn't say my name is like Ice One and like I didn't go all city. My reputation would be tarnished because there's always have to be representation. And um, honestly, hip hop, the, the real reason why I believe that hip hop does exist today that I believe personally that it was a gift, you know, um, sent from like, you know, God to like, um, to give blacks and Latinos an opportunity to like create because during the 80s there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of crime, there was a lot of gangs and a lot of people didn't really have a creative outlet so they used hip hop to get out the ghetto. You know, hip hop wasn't, it wasn't glamorizing the ghetto, it was the fact that you can come out of the ghetto and have something positive to talk about. That's why to me when I hear like music on the radio and everybody's glamorizing sex and like being ghetto, to me that's like, it's, to me it's like a form of disrespect because it wasn't started like that. All right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And honestly, like just being real about it, like black people as a whole, like that respect needs to come back. Because it started off like that. How do we go from being brothers and Nubians to just being like niggas, though? Wow. Honestly, though, that word was was um it was created for derogatory, meaning a person that would never grow. So everybody's glamorizing it. And <coughs> mom, we always say like, that's my brother, though. That's my Aki. Aki mm. means brother in Zulu. We always say peace, Aki. Right. Aki, peace. We don't say like, what's up, my nigga? Like we don't roll like that. Because the group was built on like respect and us is like, we need some role models again because I see these kids like wearing their pants like sagging for no reason and nobody really knows why they're doing it. You know, they think it's a fashion statement, which it is, but to me it's just like, you gotta have more than that. Like it's like disrespectful because it's like you're lowering the bar. Honestly, I think you're lowering the bar for us as a as a whole, as a people. So I think hip hop itself brings back that respect with graffiti, MCM, breaking, DJing, and the first one is this like knowledge of self because you gotta have knowledge of yourself to even like to even do those elements. You know? Mm. So that's how I, that's what I think about like hip hop in 2013. Um 
Has it? Has anybody ever been? Has anybody ever seen like Poppin' live? Like anybody like Poppin'? Besides like on music videos or TV? Mm-hmm. Once a long time ago. Once a long time ago? Yeah. Um, I was in. Uh, I'm not Stockton. Uh, Oakland. Oakland. It was downtown, and they have they had a festival happening down there. And everybody was popping. Right. And locking. <laughs> yeah. The um, tell you the truth, what he's saying like is um very is very true because like when that dance popping came out. It was just like, it caught on like wildfire. Everybody you seen would walk down the street and would just, they would just start popping. And then like you went to school, you know, you just walked walk, walk <laughs> to school. <laughs> That's just the way it was. Like you seen some of your friends and everybody was just like, you know, like doing touch. And it was like, all right. You know, they would just walk. Um, I want to explain that dance a little bit more because um, that dance, was created here in Fresno. A lot of people would say like Oakland and other cities, but we have verification that it was started in Fresno. And um, Boogaloo, Boogaloo Sam was inspired by like he heard something from James Brown, and he's um, what James Brown said was like, "I want y'all to watch me do the Boogaloo." So what he did is that he took that idea and decided to call it like um, a dance. You know, like he got the idea of uh, calling that dance like the boogaloo, but he would call it the electric boogaloo. And um, like that history is like pretty much like spread over like all over the world. Like a lot of people in Europe, they do that dance, but it was actually created here in Fresno. Wow. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions? Um, I'd like to ask any, ask yourself. Yeah. What kind of dancing do you do? What kind of dancing I do? Um, my style, like, I can do pretty much all the dances. What's your, what's your favorite? Yeah. My favorite is, um, actually, which is, like, breaking, which is, like, your top rock is, like, your fundamentals, you start like this. That's when you catch the beat, you know? And then, also, I started off as a, as a popper. That was, like, one of my first... That was the first introduction that I was like introduced to hip hop because I didn't know what breaking was because I'm from the West Coast. So when it was already breaking, like we had no idea what we knew what popping was, you know. So I had to be honest though, like my probably my first love would be popping, you know. And um, it was just because it was like it was a California thing, you know. And eventually, like it got incorporated into other movies, and then it became like it became universal. Yeah. Why do you think West Coast dance moves last longer than East Coast dance moves? Like breaking, breaking isn't as popular as it was, but it's like popping it or techno or anything like that lasts longer or goes more global. Or I said, I feel like people from the West Coast dance moves be like more of a condition than like East Coast dance moves. Hmm. That's pretty interesting. Like, yeah, that's like some like Harlem shit. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, um, I think the re- I think the reason why like West Coast dances like themselves like last longer than a lot of dances because like we put like a lot of flavor into it, you know, like like a lot of like soul, there's a lot of like rocking into it. And if you see other dances, people just kinda like they just do whatever. But on the West Coast we have more of a we have we put out like an extra funk on it. Mm. And I think that's the reason why like dances like that when you see it, even if you don't like popping, you know, like you're gonna you're gonna feel it because it's a it's a movement. You know what I'm saying? Like and that's a, that's why I think a lot of the West Coast dances last a lot longer because like us as um, people of color, like we have we was already like built off the drum. Like the drum beat was already in us. So honestly, whatever dance we do, it's always gonna be funky. Hmm. It's always gonna be funky. Like I've been dancing all my life, and there hasn't been one person that's been in front of me and said like. Like you can't dance, not even once. Hmm. And that was something that I knew because I, I seen it and I knew like the value of it. You know, I knew it wasn't a trend. I knew it was something like, it was something real soulful and like it had roots. I always knew that it had roots. I grew up, my mother and I used to play like Marvin Gaye, Earth, Wind and Fire, Al Green. And like I was already kind of understanding like what soul music was. And that's the reason why I really dance today. Mm. It's because of the soul music, not 
not for money, not for trends, not to be popular, just because it has a real spiritual connection and like hip hop is very soulful. Mm. Hip hop is very soulful. You know when somebody's dancing, then you know when somebody's dancing. Because mm. it's very soulful. You can distinguish the two. Somebody kind of like they're doing hip hop and somebody really doing hip hop. That's why it's called hip hop, because it has a hop. <laughs> <laughs> Any other person? I'm, I'm curious about it. One of the things that used to confuse me, because I used to pop, and I, I remember doing that long before I heard the break-in. Right. And then, as a kid, I'm watching Beat Street, and they're doing both. And they and they flow real smooth together. It was beautiful. It was like they were made together, pop-locking and breaking. But the way they were doing it, it was almost as if to say, this just all came out of New York, all mm -hmm. the way, perfect and pristine. And I showed a clip to you guys of Beat Street, where they're having a dance battle. And it's just, it looks beautiful, it looks smooth, but you'd never be like, okay, that part came from a whole different coast. Right. It merged, you know. So how did, during that time period from your, your memory, how did that kind of come together? Like, do you remember how that? It came together because, like, um, when, like, breaking how first started, you always had one popper. You know, he was like the chubby kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was always the chubby kid. Like the, and you will always send him out. So like he wasn't really good at doing footwork, but he was good at he was good at that, you know. So I think when Breaking was coming out, they always had like a, a person that would pop. So they meshed the two together, like it, all, it already went together. And it wasn't like it was a West Coast thing. It was like you always had that one dude like throw him out, you know. Because I remember <laughs> we always would battle, and just like when we think that we're getting smoked, we always pull out the chubby dude. <laughs> That's why Rerun was fat. Yeah. <laughs> I always wondered why they picked him. No, Rerun was funky though. Honestly, yeah, he was, yeah, he was a popper. When I first really, really seen dancing, I seen like the TV show What's Happening, and I seen Rerun mm -hmm. mm -hmm. locking. He jumped up and he fell on his butt. Sure did. I wanted to do that. <laughs> did you? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, when I did, I used to call that dance the pancake. Because wow. I would jump up, you know, and panic. Oh, yeah. So I thought I was tight, and then all the kids thought it was tight. So that's how I, like, honestly, that's like how I started getting my reputation, because I was doing something that I seen from what's happening. Uh -huh. You know, and everybody thought it was cool, because nobody could do it. Kids were just playing marbles, or riding bikes, or kickball, and I was in the corner, like, locked and watching what's happening. <laughs> Did everybody here know what you're talking about? What's, what's happening? happening? Yeah. I know. I used to watch it a lot. I like it. Yeah. It's a good TV show. It's like almost like kind of like how Good Times was, but Good Times was more like drama and more like serious. Mm -hmm. And what's happening was more like like there was problems, but they was always dancing. You always seen Big Shirley, no matter what, oh, Big Rise. Shirley. Yeah, yeah, they was always dancing. That's what I liked about what's happening. Like it was always fun because Rerun was in there, mm -hmm. and like Rerun was like like the chubby dude. Yeah. <laughs> would, would you say between that and Soul Train, it really it introduced Boogaloo? Yes, um, the Electric Boogaloo's came on Soul Train and like they did a performance, mm -hmm. and with that they did the robot performance, and what they did is um, that exposed um, <coughs> popping to like mainstream because they came on Soul Train. <coughs> mm, wow. Right. So if you had to uh, pick an artist of 2013 who who is staying true to hip hop, to to the real lessons of hip hop, who would you who would you choose? <laughs> <laughs> if I, if, honestly, if I had to pick a, um, you say like, like a rapper? Any, it, yeah, any artist. Any artist? For me, I, I love, I like a lot of the new rappers, but honestly, the one I hear that always keep it real and always talk about where he came from and what it's really about would have to be Nas. Okay. Always. <laughs> always from, I heard the first album, Illmatic to Stillmatic to Nostradamus. His name, like there's a um, CD he got called The Lost Tapes, and he's talking about do-rags, mm -hmm. and he was saying that his, you know, he was watching like B Street. When he said he was watching B Street and mainstream rap, like how much real can you get? Like no rapper would say B Street, hmm. unless you was like a B-boy. Mm -hmm. You know, like rappers always talk about, like that one, um, what's that new song? Um, I got gold on my watch, gold in my teeth. Mm -hmm. What's that? What's the name of that? I don't know. I'm cashing out with 